Hey friends, we are back to reading White Fur Flying by Patricia McLaughlin. And today we're going to cover chapters 13 and 14. And our last two chapters, 15 and 16, will be tomorrow. So you don't want to miss out, if you, especially if you've been listening this whole time. So let's see how things have developed. Chapter 13. It was the quiet that woke me. There were no sounds of wind and rain and hail. I opened my eyes and light was coming in one of the windows. Philip and Jack were sitting up in the hay looking at me. Jack saved me, said Philip, right away. He ran ahead of me, but when I got lost, he came back and led me to a barn. But when we were hidden in the hay, the farmer came in, so we ran out. And we ran and ran. It started to hail, and we found this place. We were both very tired. I sat up. Are you all right, Zoe? he asked suddenly. I didn't say, Philip, you're talking, because I didn't want him to stop, and I was afraid he'd be shy and silent again. I smiled at him. I know, he said, as if he'd read my thoughts. I'm talking, I know. He stroked Jack, who leaned into him and fell over in a heap so Philip could rub his stomach. I'm glad, I said, and I'm glad you're safe, both of you. I looked everywhere. I knew you would, he said, and I knew your mama would. And I did, said Mama, standing in front of us with Cody. Cody's tail wagged when he saw Philip. Mama, I jumped up and put my arms around her. She was wet. Her hair was plastered down around her face. Cody was wet, too. I knew, said Philip. Mama hugged Philip. She didn't say anything about his talking either. Let's go, said Mama. She put the leash on Jack and we followed her outside. It was clearing now and the air was fresh and sharp. Everything looked new. Mama dialed her phone. She waited a moment. Hello, she said. We're on our way. She listened. Yes, all of us, she said. She snapped her cell phone shut and smiled at us. Let's go home. Chapter 14 We walked back home together, three people and two dogs, one person talking all the way. Jack was a hero, said Philip, a true hero. He found me and led me where it was safe. I took off my rain slicker and put it around Mama. And he was never scared or scatty. Scatty is what my Aunt Phyllis says sometimes. That's funny, don't you think, said Philip, coming from her. Mama smiled. Yes, she said. Phyllis isn't so scatty today, I said. She is sitting in our house with Alice and Callie. She's probably crying. Crying, asked Philip. Why? She thought it was her fault you were lost, I said. She had screamed at you. She wanted to talk, wanted you to talk. And now I do, said Philip. No one said anything. We crossed meadows and fields. We crossed two dirt roads I didn't remember crossing. The cows looked like they had had baths all clean and shiny. The horses ran by the fences when we passed. Hello, horses, said Philip. Hello, cows. Remember those horses, Jack? We were in the barn with them. We made a little nest in the hay. I found that nest, I said. I found a bit of Jack's hair. I put my hand in my pocket and gave the clump to Philip. There it is, I said. Philip smelled it. That's Jack's hair, he said, and we laughed. We walked by the barn at the end of our meadow. The cows looked up and went back to eating. We walked up past the fence to our yard. Callie came running and leaping with excitement. Alice smiled at us and waved. Phyllis stood next to her. Daddy was on the porch standing next to a policeman. A police car stood at the curb, its whirling lights still on. Mr. Croft's black car drove into his driveway. He got out and walked down the yard. He opened his mouth to speak. We had never heard him speak up to now, but Mama spoke before he could. Phyllis, thank you for being so patient. As it turned out, Zoe found Philip and Jack, but I should tell you. Mr. Croft started to say something. Wait! It was Philip interrupting both Mama and Mr. Croft this time. Let me tell it, said Philip. Mr. Croft stopped trying to talk. Jack is this brave dog who saved me in the storm. He led me into one barn, then into another safe place when it started to hail and was so windy. Everyone stared. Alice smiled. And as Philip went on to tell the story, I didn't hear him anymore. All I saw was Phyllis kneel down to put her arms around Philip. It didn't stop Philip from talking. I was foolish to run after Jack, I suppose, but I love Jack. And then we slept in the hay until Zoe came and her mama and Cody. And then Phyllis, not crying anymore, sat down in the wet grass and put her arms around Jack, who seemed to like it very much. 
Then she hugged Cody, who of course wagged his tail. And when Phyllis pulled away, there was wet white fur all over her navy blue sweater and slacks. In the end, Mr. Croft never did speak, almost as if he'd taken over Philip's role as the silent one. And when Mr. Croft and Phyllis and Philip went across the grass and over the brook and up the steps to their house, Jack followed them. Jack, called Mama. Phyllis turned around. Oh, Claire, please let him come. We'll take care of him. Don't worry. And she opened the door and they went inside. And that is the end of chapter 14. So join me tomorrow for chapters 15 and 16, which will wrap up this book as we start our new one. Have a great day, guys.